Hello! You use a game with many archetypes, as you know, as I've covered a few of them. And now we're going to cover one more, but this time in more in-depth and detail than ever before. And we're going to have some goofy and silly hee hee ha ha's along the way. So today, we're going to be talking about the punk archetype. Now, we're not just going to be talking about the punk archetype. We're going to be showing off a bunch of different deaths from normal to mentally insane things that I could have done on 12 o'clock right now. And then we're going to show a replays for each single one of them. And tell you what I feel about the deck, how good it is, how bad is it, why did I create it, stuff like that. So we're going to start off with probably the baseline punk deck that you probably know because it's the most playable punk spend for its entirety since like that one the base like 60 card pile deck. So, let's first talk about the punk archetype. It consists of, um, these cards. They are pretty cool, and the main point about the deck is paying life points to accrue advantage, and to go into fusion and synchro plays. The main star for the deck is Xeomen, where you can pay 600 life points at a punk from monster from deck to hand. And also, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a punk monster you control, and it gains 600 attack. Now, all the level 3s have an effect where you pay 600 to do something. Now, Madame Spider pays 600 to add a punk trap, and can reduce attack. Maybe it'll come up. Wagon is a really great one, pays 600 to add a punk spell, and when your opponent targets a punk card uh, you control for a effect or an attack, it's a quick, quick effect draw card really good. And then probably, debatably, the best one is um, Sharkusai. And Sharkusai allows you to pay 600 to fusion summon, and then during your opponent's turn, quick effect pay 600 to synchro summon a punk synchro from the extra deck. So, with the level 3s out of the way, I'll get into the higher level monsters. Deer Note is the deck that made, or the card, the, the piece of support that made the deck playable. Before that, it didn't work well. It just did. And with Deer Note, it became a good deck on its own and really working, worked very well in a lot of strategies. So what it does is you can reveal one other punk monster in your hand and special summon either the revealed card or uh, Deer Note and the other and whichever one you did not summon is sent to the graveyard. Now, this is the key part of the card. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target a punk monster in your graveyard except a level five to special summon. And you can also summon Deer Note for the rest of the turn. So, um, this allowed you to go into a very simple rank 8 play, not rank, level 8 plays, and sometimes rank 8 plays, where you were able to bring back a Sharkusai, a Xeomen, to continue and extend even farther. Now I'll go into the two level 8s. Um, we'll start off with the quote unquote words from Ogre Dance. And it's kind of crazy that this card is not even played out 3 in most of the decks. Um, First, it has, like, a effect that I've never seen come up. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you make this card gain attack equal to that opponent's monster's original attack until the end of the turn, and then it has two other effects. You can tribute a punk monster, special summon this card from the hand, and you can send this card from the hand or field to the graveyard to add a punk monster from deck to hand. So, Ogre Dance is legitimately a rota for the deck, except a level 8. Pretty good. And contribute another punk to summon self out for to make a level 8 so that you can go into a level 11 single place or just get a 2500 beast stick. Pretty good. Now to the final one Foxy Tune. Foxy Tune is like the main piece of the deck. This is what makes the deck over. So, first I'll read its effect that never comes up once per turn when this card destroys a monster by battle, you gain life points equal to that monster's original attack. Then it also has the same effect where you can contribute a punk monster summon itself in the hand. And then here's its main effect. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon a punk from monster from your deck, except the level eight. So it just starts all your plays. That's what it does. And the best thing, the best 1.5 comp, 1.5 card combo is you normal summon Zeoman, activate the effect of Zeoman, add Fox, Foxy to summon itself, and the other card in your hand. Summon out a Deer Note from deck, and from there you can go off. Now I'll move to the uh, other cards. First I'll talk about the 
trap card that it gets searched, it is a infant. And if you control Punk, a monster, you gain life points equal to the target monster's original attack. So it's pretty cool. Um, then we have Punk Extreme Jam Session. Or, yes, Jam Session. So, what Jam Session does is that you can banish a Punk monster, or sorry, card, from your graveyard. Special summon a Punk monster from your hand. This grants you even more extension. And that's pretty good, you know. But if that was the only thing the card did, you would play. So, if a second monster you control paid life points to activate effect, you can draw a card. You can use this effect twice, up to twice per turn. It's a draw two, so it's very good and allows you to draw many cards. Now, I'll quickly move on to the extra levels. Rising Carbon um, can tribute itself to specimen up to two punk monsters from the deck with different names, and they can't be left legs. So, you just tribute it to summon your Xiamen, Demon Note. And set, and set up many combos. It's a key essential part of the deck. And now, since Chaos Ruler is banned, um, what is it? Rest in peace, homie. Uh, you usually make dra uh, Jam Dragon Die when it's specified by the effect of a punk card or sinker or something. You can pay 600 to add a level 3 psychic. Fun fact Ghost Over is a level 3 psychic, so you can add Ghost Over at this. You can also add Shadol when Window, whichever that one is. You can add a really bunch of funny levels, like some of those spells. Have fun with that information. Um, that's his only real important effect, and Punk Amazing Dragon. This is a great card. When Synchro Summon, you can target cards. Um, your opponent controls up to the number of level 3 psychic monsters with different names in your graveyard. Usually throughout the combo, if you're if you're lucky enough, you will get all four at the low level. All, all the four low level punks in there, and then um, return them to the hand. So this can be possibly a bounce four on your opponent's turn. Now, if you want me to describe what gold prides do, um, read them. They play off of punks very well as they want to make you lose life points and can only really activate things if you have lost life points. But with that, let's get into some gold pride punk replays. Already, our first replay is a going second against... Ninjas, hey. I think I know how ninjas work. But sure enough, they are going to normal summon Hanzo. I chain Ash Blossom. And Fates. They do have an Ash in the draw. Xiamen triggers. Um, Drew and Lockbird says, Yo, what's poppin', my guy? I said, if you're not make jam drive, trigger jam drive just to lose health. It's funny. Summon back the Xeon, or I can actually say that. Well, forgot about that. You summon out uh, Leon and Captain. And when you start Leon to the top, you go to, to a Psychic and a Punisher, and that is lethal. And it would be awesome like that. Next replay is once again against the Ninjas, but this time we're going first. And they only have an Imper. They do have a game still, so let's see what see what's cooking. We are going to activate Battle Luck next time. Normal Sins is young. Activate the effect. They Imperm that. <laughs> Joke's on you. Never knew that anyways. Captain Carry triggers. Captain Carry gets uh, these like, engines. Make Chariot Carry to add the guy that you never play. The crowd goes wild. Really good card, actually. To add the Baller. About summon Leon. I made a misplay here, I believe. Never mind, I didn't make a misplay. Summon back the Captain Carry, make the Star Leon, set the start your engine's pass, cycle into another Captain Carry, draw a card. What this is, is a one pop, two pop, and double yoink. Hey, double yoink, Hanzo. Shane Ash. Set a card, make a Mitsu, or some Mitsu, I just pop that. I trigger start your engines. Um, they can't do anything with the dancing moves. So, so that is our first punk deck. Now I'm gonna talk about the only other punk deck I believe that has seen any competitive vibe. Yes, sir. It is Punk Theron. Now, if you remember the punk cards, they do good stuff, but they synergize very well with the Therion cards that are level 7s and level 8s, allowing you to make Baron plays and continue to make Psychic and Punishers and fun things like that. 
if you've read the things, they all kind of summon themselves back and equip themselves. And Borea is a search for a spell. Yul does nothing but is a psychic. Empress gets to summon a discard to summon one of the equipped ones. Reaper is a bounce. And the most important, the homie, Regulus, is a negate. Now, I once again, I believe, have two great plays with Punk Therion, and let's get into it. Alright, so we are playing against Volcanic Runic, the, the MBT video. One, two, three. We're going to go Xeomin, Xeomin effect. We're going to add the Sharku side. This is the alternate combo line I like to do. Summon out the Rising Cup, Rising Cup, summon out um, Wagon, and you know, Wagon add Stream Sash. We summon Dio Volantis because we're cooked. And then we are going to summon back the rising card, which may be on here. So we make champion Sargus here. Add a regular ogre dance to get the Madame Spider. Now we're going to go Madame Spider effect to add the dangerous Gabu. We get a draw off. Now we're going to regular equip the Brea. Now regular using the Brea's effect to add Discolosseum. We get the Yule. We use Foam to equip. We make a um, Baron, Glacia, a clip, the Yo. Um, then we're going to overlay those two into a whole Harbinger. So, we have a um, double Omnis, Spell and Trap Negate, and Perm. Pretty good, I would say. Now, how's this affect you? Um, they summon Hugin. I'm like, maybe it'll work. Uh, they activate Rimfire, I Ash, they trigger Fire Rejection, which is a very solid card, so I don't say no to it. They flash new fire to pop to there, and I decide to actually negate with the Regulus here. And then Mobile summon the Rocket, and negate. Um, they decide to not concede. I change it to Defense for some reason, because I'm really smart. But we're still able to add Berea back, summon it, go into Battle of Faith, and we do have Lethal now to the next game. It's gonna be once again against this goofy odd. Alright, we're against Volcanics again, but hey, they're going first, but whoa, will you look at that? We have fun and interactive cards. They're gonna go just to the tip. Hugin, pitch the Emperor, add that. Oh no, what's that? Nice, nice cards you got there. Um, scatter shot and sprint. Summon out the Merly and use these two to make a Drago Sapelia. That's a goofy awe attack, which I, I, I also think. Um, normal summon the Xeomin. They do just hard Drago Stapelia here. And unfortunately for them, um, it don't pay off here. It don't pay off. We're doing that alternative line. We're going to the Rising Carp to get here and Wagon. Wagon add the Extreme Session. Make Jam Drive. And, um, if you may see here, I need a wee bit of an oopsie and forgot to activate the Extreme Session. This is what's called. Um, we're still going to win this game. Um, we make the Sargus again, add Regulus. We're going to summon out the Mbum Speeder uh, to that, and then we draw another card. Then we activate this, uh, the aggro system. Regulus, we're going to discard using the Lacey effect. We're going to make a Psychic End Puncher, because Lacey is one of whatever. Now we're going to activate the Psychic End Puncher effect, because... We want to go for a game and be kind of silly. Uh, we're going to banish these two in Magic Circus. We get to draw another card, Enter Battle Base. That's a big boy! And Regulus goes in for a game. Now, those were the two kind of same decks that I, that I cooked up. Um, from here it goes downhill. I would like to give honorable mentions to Punk Tier Element. Oh, uh, Punk Tier Elements and Punk Virtual World. But... I was too lazy to do Punk Virtual World, and Punk Tier Elements, I would just have unlucky, get unlucky with it, did not enjoy playing it, so I didn't want to talk about it, but those are two other decks that you can look up. But now, into the, um, the silliness. Alright, ladies and gents, we're off to the races with Punk Witchcrafter. Now, I would like to say I copied a majority of this list from some random dude on YGO Pro deck that made this into a Master Duel deck, so I had to do some edits, because it was running, like, 
Chaos Ruler Maxi, but I'll explain the basics. So Cartesia allows you to fusion summon a level high rate fusion monster. It's a quick effect, and it is a soul effect. So, um, the Vice Madame, the new Witchcrafter fusion card, needs a spellcaster monster and a Witchcraft. So the whole goal is to do <coughs> a bunch of milling and try to summon out the Cartesia while you have a Witchcrafter in hand and or on field. Silly. And using the Cartesia and that Witchcrafter to make uh, Vice Madame. And I'm not sure if you've read Vice Madame or if you know what the Witchcrafter is do, but Vice Madame is insane. The spell card or non fusion spellcaster effect, monster effect is activated. Quick effect you do one of three of these things, you can only do, and then you can do all three of them. One is pop, one is special a level six or lower witchcrafter from the deck, and or add a witchcrafter spell trap from the graveyard to the hand. So, really cool stuff. This deck was actually really fun to test, and I think it's very silly and kind of want to build it in person. Because I, I like to say that witchcrafters and vice madame is like such a cool and nutty card. But, I have a fun replay for you, and we're about to see what this deck can do in action. Alright, we are going to be going first against Runic Plunder. So, not a bad deck, um, but every single Runic card does trigger like everything. So, it's going to be fun. We are going to start off by activating Extreme Session and be telling out the Zeomin. Right now I'm kind of just trying to fiend for some interaction. I don't know what they're playing. Draw a card. That's a great one. Summon out the gear note. We make jam drive. And we're going to bring back the foxy tune. Now, and then we're going to add the young feeder. And we are going to draw a card. Call it as we get. We need to hit something good off here. What do we hit? Is that a summoner mark? Mark of Ebony, obviously. Um, we summon back the summoner mark, pitch the holiday. We summon out the Cartesia, and look at that, we got it. It's fairly really easy to do this. Then we activate, um, the creation, the chain link to get the Shkameta. Um, tonight we get another Shkameta. Honestly, we could have not done that, and it would have been fun. We add the Dangerous Gambit. Now we link into a format Appalooza. We add everything back to hand, we know a confusion. So we have two witchcrafter or two spells in hand to do with fun things. And with that, smiting sun. I get to summon something in the deck. That's nice. I got my Shemina open. Hugin, I chain. Let's go into a hand. Now, we trigger uh, chain link one with white, chain link two apple, and freezing curses negates all the Appaloosan's gonna change to zero attack. And, ah! Just, uh, that just solo out the entire after this they make Blackbeard. Now, they we have a big chain link. Chain link one root and fountain to just activate. Chain link two, uh, Vice Madame to pop. Chain link three, Blackbeard targeting himself. And then we're going to chain link, yeah, chain link four. And then I'm gonna chain link five, because why the heck not? So then I pop that, and I did not know this, but because it like targets as cost. And it doesn't, the card doesn't need to be on the field to resolve. They still get the <laughs> Yod. And um, I, instead of popping the fountain, I decided to pop the Jord to stop their other place. And now it's time to draw three Runic Dispelling. Rip a card, mill a bunch. I'm down to nine cards. I'm getting really scared. But whoa, that actually wasn't that good of draws. I'm summoning the homie. They make a Mo work. I'm gonna confuse what they do. They discard a black, um, uh, black guys to try to get rid of the hang. Now, I'm really confused why they aren't targeting my Vice Madame, because, like, Vice Madame is just aimed but better in every possible way. I, I, I think it's like, she's like, Vice Madame is just an upgrade to hang that look. They, they look the same. Um, I just infirmed the Moark. They set the Infib. Pass. Immediately Infib the hang. I don't get what they're trying to do here. Because this is just silly. I just pop it. Flashing fire. Oh no, it still gets destroyed. What do they get? Gary. They get Gary. They add that to hand. But what is this? I have an E-Telly. I have a Vice Madame. What? What they're gonna do? What they gonna do? They gonna do nothing. 
that's what I say. Because I still have the pop, and I still, I can just do so much stuff. So, even though I only have eight cards left in there. So they scoop it up. Now, you may even thinking, well, that deck actually kind of worked. It was somewhat sane. That's really the last one. Now we're going into the insane, um, I'm Chosen to be a terror. But the next one was also really funny. So, let's get started. I've made a spear and two slaps in my judgment. Um, I would like to introduce to you Punk Gate Guardian. So the thinking of this was Punk draws cards, Gate Guardian needs more cards, Gate Guardian makes double spell and trap negate Booga Booga, and we play them together. Surprisingly, there are actually a few Punk Gate Guardian lists that go around. As crazy that is to hear. Um, they really don't have much synergy. The only synergy is that, like, all the heavy tanks and the Suijin, Kazujin, and Senga are all level 7, so if you somehow get one on field, Baron. Really, other than that, they have absolutely zero synergy. Just, you get to draw stuff with the punk engine, the punk's just consistent, and Gate Guardian is silly. That's all my reason. Now, let's get into it. Our best of them, we're playing against the meta with Labyrinth. So, let's see what happens when Labyrinth happens. They shin the deleted, so to welcome Labyrinth Cuckoo Clock. I don't know why they cuckoo clock, but they pass you. They have Welcome Labyrinth and a Skill Drain. Um, I didn't know they had, they had a Skill Drain. But we're gonna start off with the Hero Lives. Funny lady with deep says no. They chain the Welcome Labyrinth. They summon Ariana. Ariana is going to add Mother. They chain the Um, I am able to Labyrinth and also get a Kazi Jin, and I'm thinking, hoo hoo hoo, if I get my, uh, Water and Wind guy off this is GG's. I make Water and Wind. I now say it's safe. Now I can go into Pump Combos. What is that when the Drain is skillful? And I thought I could chain Gate Guardian of Wind and Water to the game, but it doesn't destroy, so I can negate the activate. Huh. I go into battle, I triggered this because I can get how to read. But it's fine. I was planning for this masterful move. They attack over. I trigger, I float back into a Kazi room. So, this is the thing. I wall shadow. I get the same over thunder. I just summon a Baron to floor, and I summon a Gate Guardians combined. In a board state where all monsters are skill drained, and they have one card in hand, and it is not anything powerful. How are they gonna out this guy? 3750 attack. Bro is chunked. That's what that happened. The question I just asked them as I beat over the uh, ladder and pass turn with a Baron and a Gate Guardian combined. They draw the area and they're like, ah, I can't play under a skill drink either. Maybe I should have used critical thinking before playing in my deck. Now, I have one more list. One more list. This is the worst copium list of all. And you want to know the best thing about it is though it is most likely the worst deck on this list. I have the deck in a deck box right here. I built this last one. So, without further ado, it's time to show you my biggest copium take. Behold! My child. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Punk Ursartic. So, if you don't know what the Ursartic deck was, it was released along with Drytron and No, that's completely wrong. It was released along with um, Sofa Chords and Ogdalad in the best deck build set for me. These decks. But! Rosartics have been garbage. Because all of their cards need you to attribute a level 7 or higher monster from your hand to summon themselves out. These go even, because this one adds from deck to hand. This one adds from graveyard to hand. This one summons from the hand. But these guys, Megapola, Megatanus, and Megabellus, they don't go plus. They, they, they don't even go even. They go minus. But they have some silly effects, because when they're summoned while you control an Arsartic, they do a weird hand trap effect. 
Megatanus is a book of moon. Megapola is a MST, which is really cool. And Megabilis is a DD Crow. But they all make you go minus. And this deck makes you go minus. It, it, playing it makes you go minus in brain cells as well. So, how do you fix the deck? Well, you get new support that's broken. When you normal... Or, sorry, when you special summon or assert a monster from your hand or extra deck, move a counter and draw a card. This card has seven counters. No hard ones per turn, no restrictions like that. You, This card allows you to draw seven cards in a turn. Deck's still unplayable. But... In the latest set, they got two new cards with this support. And I'm going to read them back from Ultimate Bright Knight or Sartron Alpha. That is a mouthful. It can't be normal summon set. It must be special summoned by a card effect, and if you control an Osartic or Drytron monster, so it can be played in Drytron, you can special summon it from your hand, and then add a Osartic or Drytron player effect from the deck to hand. So, this makes Radiation, the draw of seven, searchable. Ooh, buddy, yippee. <laughs> Now, for the other card that has made my friends rage. Versartic Polar Soul. Love the Dripped Out Bear. It uses, like, Dark Synchro mechanics, so you either use a, like, a level 1 and a level 2 to make it, or you use a level 8 and a level 7 to make it. Pretty silly, but it can tribute a level 8 or Sartic monster from your hand or field, and itself to special summoning level 7 or Sartic monster, or, or Sartic synchro monster from the extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, and it gains the effect where it is a... The basic way to say is, it's a skill drain for leveled monsters from the extra deck. Now here's the funny thing. Septeritrion. I just call this one Septic Tank. Septic Tank has the ability that it is a skill drain for extra deck monsters without level. So when you combine Polar Star with Septic Tank, you get a full extra deck skill drain. That's what this deck does. It makes a skill drain. So with that out of the way, I'm going to show you some replays. So one is going to be expectations. The other one is reality. Let's start with expectations and why this deck is my copium take. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my copium take, and today we are going to be doing a test hand. This is the expectation, because when this deck does things, it is nutty! We're going to start off with the E-Telly, summon the Shark Kusai. Shark Kusai is going to summon itself for making the Rising Carpet and Zyaman, as Rising Carpet is summoning Deerna and Wagon. Wagon is going to add Extreme Session. Then we are going to activate the extreme session. We're going to make the jam drive. Jam drive is going to add, I think, one of the other ones. We're going to add a shark coot. So back. We're going to now summon out the draw a card. Summon out the Madame Spider. And Madame Spider is going to add Dangerous Gabu. Draw another card. Now, what's that? We activate. We got radiation here. Now we. This is our board state. We have jam dragon drive. A level eight. A Fun stuff, and we have a bunch of Versartics. Let's see what the Versartics are. First, we're gonna Mega Polar. We are going to draw off of Radiation, and we are going to add another Alpha. We're going to summon the Alpha. We are going to add Departure. I can probably move this one. Discard, add, discard a card, add two Versartic monsters, bring it back to your hand. It does that. We also draw another card. We're going to summon another one. We are going to make a Baron de Fleur, because we can do that. Now we're gonna activate that. Um, now we're gonna activate Big Dipper. Now, if you don't know what Big Dipper does, its main thing is that once per turn, it can you mostly replace the effect when a Ursartic needs you to tribute stuff. You can just banish one from the graveyard instead. This also counts for the Polar Star. So if you use Polar Star, you can also you can just banish one from the graveyard, making you go insanely positive. We're going to summon Mega Tantalum and some so a, a high level. We're going to make that Polar Star, and we are going to draw another card. Like, say, look at the board, say, look at the other cards in hand. Um, why you ask me we were playing in Tritron Battle, because in this list that I edited, we were playing with Kyushu. This one's silly. It's funny. But now we're going to use the replacement effect of Big Dipper to summon- Oh wait, is that a skill drain? The drain is skillful. We draw another card, we are going to Ursaltic the Pop. The Jam Drive, because I want to extend more. We summon out this. Polar Star again! into Grand Chariot. 
<coughs> not on the front. The normal summon a drone lockbird because we haven't we haven't normal summon make a herald. And that is it. If we look at this board, we have a herald, we have a bear, we have a extra deck skildred, and also when you special summon a card, or Sartic, Septic Tick allows you to search any your Sartic. Um Grand Cherry tributes a or Sartic to um negate and destroy, or sorry, just negate an effect that would target our Sartic, so we got target protection here. And then the only other card that we searched is the Dangerous Gabu, but because in total we drew eight cards that turn. We drew eight. We also just drew to Ash and Call by the Grave and a Drill on our own. So, this is what the deck in theory could do. This is why I built it in person. If you don't believe that this is a deck that I actually built in person, um, we got we got like some Sergeant cards here. Um, cards. Oh, here are the punk cards. Yep, we're starting to take I am, I am that meant to the bridge. But now, that you've seen what I hope the deck can do, it's time to get hit with reality. Today, we're going to give the punk deck the biggest challenge yet. We are going to put it up in a best of three against Pearly, one of the best decks in the new format with Castira getting a Nenado. We're going first, I believe. Itelli. Jerkusai. They infirm. Oh no. Actually, it's not that bad. We're going to... Megatanius. And I'm going to be honest, looking back at this, I am really stupid. Because I could have done ma many other things to make this work. But, I am stupid. Um, but we pass turn with a Baron de Fleur, a Crossout, and a Droll. Against Burleys. Let's see what happens with when, bear when I do a Baron pass. Uh, they activate my friend, Pearly. I decide to Droll. They trigger memory. A happy memory. Um, her Lily whips. They trigger the Pearly, or just the normal Pearly. I bear in here because I feel like maybe they only have like two, three cards in hand. Maybe I can keep the Pearly. Nope, they do Butea. Suck the Baron. Zeus. I draw. Yeah, no, we can't do that. We'll cross out. I'll cross out. And scoop it up. But hey, we can do something in game two. Right? Game two, we got a stinker of a hand. Triple departure is not what you want to see. So, we'll see what we can do. We can start off by activating departure, pitch, departure, and alpha and make a lot. We're going to trigger. Make a pola, we're gonna have the Mega Pola. We're going to send the Polari, get the Big Dipper, and then Polari has another effect. We're gonna send back the Mega Pola. And then we are going to make a Septarian Pass. Back to a happy memory. And scoop. Now you may be wondering why. Why the they scoop to that? If you remember, Septic Tank is a skill drain against Monster Death Devil. So, Pearlies can't do anything, because if you check the extra deck, um, yeah, no, they, they don't have they, they have nothing going on in there that they can use to be able to save the tank. Except the tank for the Now we go into game three. I wonder how that's going to go with Pearly going first. Game three, Pearly's going first. They also open Niving Cross out, so we'll see what happens. Sweet Bean Men will be summoned the Pearlily Pearlily effect at the end. Trigger it. Get greedy memory for Lily effect. Make the noir. Greedy memory noir. Get the early. Get some my. Come out a early. This one more. And early. Okay. Happiness. I don't know why they made the happiness, but up. Uh, that's double sleepy memory. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Ah, oh, drawing lock. My favorite card. Noir. And them um, draw, draw, draw. Lovely. All their other draws. Or duty. But. Pitch that. Yeah. Pitch that. Full knock. Are you fool? You fell into the classic trap. Classic classic one. But. Here's the one issue. As you can see. Even though we do have the uh, Pug Engine. We have not opened the Pug Engine. We are playing Pure Resurgence. You can know a single thing about Pure Resurgence. It's bad. It's bad. We're gonna summon that alpha. Not alpha, not alpha, make me. 
them know something about the Alpha. Only radiation. Oh, they can just get it back. Because why not? We're going to trigger Slider. Bring this, the homie, back. We're going to trigger the effect of Megatanus. I cannot tell his name the Noir because of my pearly street, and that's a stupid card. I hate it. We summon the Mika Polar, and at this point, oh, oh yeah, we should probably spin that. that. I chained the Mega Polar. Um, what does this do? I get to pop that. They decide to move here, here, which is just adding insult to injury, really, at this point. And I scoop because I am salty, and there's nothing else I can do. So now, time to get into all of the deck openings. All right. We're back, and I'm going to start off with the best one first, Punkle Pride. It's seen meta play, it has a few tops still, and honestly, it's just an all-around good, solid deck. If you're looking for the most competitive version of Punk Around, you should try this one out. Moving on to the Therion build, my thoughts of the Therion build are, meh, it feels alright. The Therions I felt didn't add enough. Or, but enough that I was hoping for for the amount of space and the slots I put in for them. They feel meh. They work, but they just feel meh. I was not super disappointed, but I just felt underwhelmed by this list. It's okay. It's not not viable, I don't think. But it's not too bad. Speaking of not too bad, the Witchcrafter list has actually surprised me. I thought it was going to be maybe the worst list because witchcrafters, but it is surprisingly competent. I'm not going to call it good because it's still witchcrafter and punk doesn't change the fact that's witchcrafter. The deck does work better in mass removal as well because you have better ways to mill um, the cards that you need. Just that. But um, the best way to summarize this deck is Vice Madame is a stupid broken card. Vice Banana makes you say, BAM! Okay, bad joke. Bad joke, I'm sorry. But, genuinely surprised by how this deck played. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. Moving on, Gate Guardian. It's silly. It's not good. It's not good. It's silly. It's it's a fun local deck if you want to go and throw people off by going full co punk combo and then activating Labyrinth Wall of Shadow. Throw them for a loop. Make them question reality. Because it's pretty funny. Now for the final one. I love it. Two zero meta. Uh, be prepared to deal with this deck everywhere, honestly. Okay, a little seriousness. It is better than pure Ursartic. Because the punks are not Ursartic cards. It has an incredibly high ceiling. It had it just the ceiling for this deck is drawing nine cards in a turn. Um, not many other decks can do that. Um, but other than having an incredibly high ceiling, it doesn't have much going for it in the terms of the fact that Nibiru kills it, Droll kills it. Um, if you open up the only the Orsartic side, it kills itself. Um, it has a lot of issues, but it's really funny and fun. I played out locals and went um, one in three. The only person I was, that I went against was playing like the old old Dino Structure deck, like not the good Dino Structure deck, the other. You know what I'm talking about. So, not good results, but it was a silly deck. It was fun. Now, if I were to recommend any list to you. I would highly recommend the Pump Gold Pride due to the fact that the Gold Pride cards are now coming down in, in price, so they're, they're fairly cheap, and it is the best deck, at least by a mile. It's just the best one. And if you want to be funny, I would highly suggest the Gate Guardian stuff, because the Gate Guardian stuff is actually quite cheap, and it's just the, it's, it's the in my opinion, this one was the worst of the fun. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this complete, like, smack down of the entire, like, the punk archetype. And if you were wondering what my other lists look like, here's some punk tier that I made. Um, here is a punk ninja list that I made, and a punk virtual list. Um, the one thing I'd like to know about this virtual world is, if you run the generator, I see it's in virtual world, that's what it's like. But, that's it for this video. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the tomfoolery of all these lists. I hope this gives you some inspiration to, to cook up some stuff of your own. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.